Welcome to Encompass Live. I'm Emily Nimsicott, filling in for Krista Burns. Encompass Live is the Nebraska Library Commission's weekly online event. We cover NLC activities and other library-related topics presented by NLC staff and guests. These uh, one-hour sessions are free, and they're offered every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Central Time. And they include a mixture of presentations, interviews, book reviews, web tours, mini training sessions, and Q&A sessions. Our presenter today is Katherine Brockmeyer, and she is going to be talking about Adventures in Facebook. Take it away, Katherine. Thanks, Emily. Good morning, everyone. Um, yes, um, we're going to talk about Adventures in Facebook, getting your library on the board, on the web. And um, I think it's going to be a pretty exciting hour. Um, I talk, tend to talk kind of fast, so if you have questions, go ahead and post them, and Emily will try to help me. Um, answer them as we go along, or uh, especially if I'm talking too fast. Um, otherwise, uh, I'll try to save some room at the end for questions. So, make sure we don't have any questions to start. Nope. Is there a chat box? No. There's okay. No chat. Okay. So, we'll get started here. Um, once again, just to um, remind you what... Uh, what we're talking about today. What does it take to create a presence for library, your library on Facebook, or if you have another organization that you're considering doing this for? Um, difference between a fan page and a group. How do you um, spread the word about your Facebook presence? And I'm going to talk about the Nebraska Book Festival and the One Book, One Nebraska programs um, that, that I uh, created on Facebook. Well, we'll talk about those and some other examples. And me, um, I am a research analyst and special projects associate here at the Nebraska Library Commission. I've been here a little bit over a year. I also do some grant writing and evaluation. There's my contact information if you'd like to follow up. I'd be more than happy to help you create your Facebook fan page or group um, outside of this presentation. And so just give me a call or uh, send me an email and we'll see what we can do. And about you, um, depending on your library, perhaps you're a public library, academic, community college, school, special institutional, and your cr credentials today, well, you're just ready to navigate. You're ready to get out there and try this, and you've got a sense of adventure, and that's why we're calling this Adventures in Facebook. And here's a map of everybody that has plugged in. Um, the nice thing about the internet, the nice thing about GoToWebinar, first of all, is that uh, we can provide these webinars to anybody anywhere in the world. And so as you can see, there are people all over Nebraska. This saves time. This saves money. Um, then you could talk about the Internet in general. Um, you can be from anywhere in the world and have a presence on Facebook. So let's talk about the world of Facebook for a second. Um, I was thinking about this, the history of Facebook. Can you believe that? We're talking about the history. It's already made history. It just started in 2003. We're already talking about it in the context of history. Um, the gentleman who started this social networking website, his name's Mark Zuckerberg. He was a student at um, he was a student at Harvard, and he was spurned by a woman. And so he decided to do a hot or not sort of website, and he hacked into the Harvard. Um, email system and um, he also hacked into their um, they had these things called Facebooks where they were pictures of the students and it was kind of like a, a yearbook um, and so somehow he hacked into that and started what he called um, at the time face mash and um, Harvard pulled it um, for a while because what he'd done was hacking and then um, he was allowed somehow to recreate it that was in 2003. Then in 2004, he renamed it The Facebook. And I believe at that time, he opened it up to Ivy League schools. And then in 2004, also I think somewhere in there, um, he also opened it up to students in uh, high schools. And um, then in 2004, he renamed it Facebook. And in 2006, he opened it up to um, the general public. And it's become viral since then. So I looked for a couple of uh, uh, cartoons online about Facebook. I'm sure that there are many, many more out there uh, in, in opinion columns and so on and for, so forth. But uh, the one on the left, um, <laughs> just thought that one was pretty funny. And the one on the right at Hy-Vee, I don't know which Hy-Vee this was, but this was on 
uh, Flickr, but I just uh, found that to be pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> you could be a fan of hy on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. And then this is one of my favorite ones from, uh, <laughs> from the New Yorker. So he's letting everybody know about himself, doing all the popular things, leave a comment, what I'm doing right now, tw the 25 things about me meme that went around, and me in 1986 when they did the throwbacks. So he put all that in his front lawn <laughs> instead of doing it on Facebook. Pretty hilarious. And a social commentary already. Um, what's your goal for getting onto Facebook? Do you want to communicate with your patrons or possibly your whatever you consider your audience? Do you want to advertise your events? Do you want to engage your patrons? Perhaps you want to use Facebook to attract fans to your website, if you have one. Um, if you're a school, um, you might want to be communicating with your students outside of school if they're able to um, access Facebook from home. Um, or perhaps students that are in your youth advisory council or in your teen, teen groups at the, your public library. Or if you're an academic library, you want to communicate with your students that way. Um, some people in the, school, um, in the schools, uh, public schools or private schools, uh, try to communicate with the parents of their students through a Facebook group or fan page. Or perhaps you have a special ongoing project similar to the One Book, One Nebraska. It's actually through the Nebraska Center for the Book, but I created a special project group that deals um, only with One Book, One Nebraska, so something that's specialized. Or perhaps you're not ready to have a website, but you'd love to have a fa uh, presence on the Internet, and Facebook is a wonderful way to do that. Okay, let's talk about the difference between groups and pages and personal accounts. Um, let's talk about group first. I gathered this information straight from the horse's mouth from the help section on Facebook. Um, since groups look similar to Facebook pages, what's the difference between them? They have different purposes. Groups are meant to foster group discussion. Pages allow entities such as public figures and organizations to broadcast information to their fans. And only the authorized representative of the entity can run a page. So um, if your name is Michael Jackson, you know, I feel bad for you because um, only Michael Jackson could have had a Facebook page um, with the likeness of Michael Jackson. Um, and they can, def they, celebrities can definitely um, pull uh, other people's pages if they're trying to impersonate them. What are the pros of being a group? You can email everyone in your group. A con, the email um, comes from you personally. Another con, and I'll show you how this works. When you post to your group um, area, you post personally as yourself. Um, there is no real um, administrator. Now, let's talk about the, go the other way, page versus a group. Um, pages are meant to represent a real organization, business, celebrity, or band. And they can only be created, you know, they, you kind of do this on the honor system, but by an official representative of that entity. So um, I was allowed to create the um, Nebraska Book Festival fan page for the Nebraska Center for the Book. I was given permission to do that. Um, groups can be kept closed or secret. Um, I'm in a group through my church where there are just eight of us, and we don't really need anybody else to know what's going on, so it's only by invitation and um, when we post to the group it doesn't our posts don't show up on our uh, news feed that everybody else can see you know that we're attending a meeting or something to that effect um, pages allow people to maintain a personal professional distinction on Facebook so where it says pro I don't, I don't mean to use the word anonymously but when you post what shows up in the, that news feed is the um, the icon for your for your fan page and I'll show you how that works um, and then the only con that I could think of at the time was that you can't email everyone uh, you can invite people to events and everything um, but you can't email everyone now um, here's a uh, page versus personal profile uh, I have seen that there are businesses that have created personal profiles I recommend against that um, because uh, Facebook pretty much disallows that if they f 
found out, which they're not going to go looking for you, but if they found out that um, you created a personal account on behalf of your organization, they might delete you. Um, the nice thing about a page, it's more professional. Um, one of the old cons was that it was easier for people to ignore your updates, but now with the new news feed, you get everything, pretty much everything. Um, but I still think sometimes Facebook is selective what they let you see. I've been having some problems with that, not being able to keep up with some of my friends because somehow Facebook just randomly decides uh, which updates you get, and so I've missed some pretty cool stuff, what I consider to be pretty cool stuff because Facebook decided just to randomize um, what I got to see. Um, and then another con about page versus profile, personal profile, you cannot email everyone as a group. Okay, first things first, you have to create a personal account. And um, supposedly you're supposed to be 13 or up. Um, the reason that you need to create a personal account is to be able to create a page or to be able to create a group, you have to have a personal account. So that's first things first. And to get started creating a page, I'll show you how do we do this, but I wanted to give you the links. Go ahead and write these down. Um, there are two ways to get to it. One is um, to go to www.facebook.com slash pages slash create.php, or even if you just go to pages without the last part, um, the last extension there, you should be able to click a button that says create. And same with groups, groups slash create.php. Um, also, along the left-hand side of your home page, um, there's a button to click that says Add Some Pages or the button to click that says Groups. And there should be, then once you follow that link, there should be a button on your page that says Create a Page or Create a Group. So, let's go. I'm excited. Okay. We are going to go to Facebook. Stop and check for questions. Sure, let's stop and check for questions. See if anybody's got any questions. Oh, there we go. Um, real quick, do more K-12 schools use pages or groups? I am leaning toward a page since I don't really want to e need to email them. Um, Perhaps by the end of this um, session, you'll have a better feel for it. Um, it's six of one and half a dozen of the other, to be honest with you. Um, so let's let's go through the the um, presentation, and at the end, if you still have a question, I'm hoping that some of your questions will be answered before that. But um, let me keep that question in mind um, for this person. And um, if we need to, we'll get back to you on that. Okay, here we go. Facebook.com, pretty easy. And if you're ready to, you sign up. Um, if you need to create your own personal account, I already have an account with a silly email that I've had for 22 years. No, 12 years. I don't know. It's been too long. So um, here's where I was talking about top news. Top news for some reason is stuff that's been done recently, um, but not necessarily the most recent. This is the most recent, and for some reason it seems that Facebook does not allow you to um, see everybody's updates. But over here on the left, you can check your messages, you can check events you've been invited to, um, you can see what people have posted for photos, and that is that does include um, fan pages and uh, or pages and groups, which is kind of cool. And that sort of stuff will show up in people's news feeds now, more so than it used to. Um, you used to be able to filter and just check people's status updates, so you could ignore all that other stuff. Um, but now, now it's, it includes more things, but I think it's still just random. So, um, down here we're going to go to ads and pages. And as you can see, I'm an administrator of three, three pages. One is, um, Nebraska Book Festival. Another is I'm added on as administrator of several of us are of the Nebraska Library Commission page. And then I created a fan page <laughs> for a high school teacher of mine. 
and uh, she was real popular when we were in high school. She's still popular, and so there are 30 of us who belong to the We Love Honey Lou <laughs> fan page. Okay, let's head to the Nebraska Book Festival page. I just kind of want to show you a little bit about it, and then we're going to discuss how to create one. I will walk you through that. Once you have created a page, oh, I changed my mind. Let's go ahead and create a page. I click on create a page. Your button might look different. Um, you're going to want to create local because it, brand is like Mountain Dew. Artist is if, you've, if you're an artist or you have a band or you're a public figure. Um, and what's really nice is there is one called Library Public Building. You name your page. Um, the happy... I'm going to delete this in a bit. Public library. And I don't want this to be publicly visible at this time because I want to get stuff created first. I will delete this uh, when I'm done. Then um, you basically have a blank slate. Um, if you hover over things, you're, you can see that there are links. Um, you can automatically become fan and uh, once this is public then people will see that I've become a fan of this page. Um, the info page is uh, where you add basic information, address, city, town, um, your hours. This is great especially if you don't have a website. Um, detail information if you do have a website, if you want to give basic general information. Um, the wall you can change the settings so that only only you, the fan administrator, uh, page administrator, can post. Um, you and or here um, that people can only post perhaps links and uh, video, but you're not going to allow them to post videos or events. So there are different ways you can um, take care of that. Um, edit the page. Um, there are different settings, wall settings. Um, you can update your fan page from your mobile phone. Um, you can create discussion groups. I'll show you how this all works. Events, links, notes, um, where you, um, if you kind of want to blog as opposed to create just little Twitter-like updates. Photos, video, um, and then there are other um, applications and we'll talk about static FBML in just a little bit. This does show who the administrators are. Um, I, I can't tell what it looks like to other people because you have all of these extra options that you can use to edit your page. Um, the other thing that it's good to look at up here uh, is you can promote your page if you want to. Um, um, you have to pay for ads, but I just wanted to show that to you. Okay, so let's go back to ads and pages. I am going to delete this page, and it's permanent. Okay, all right. Um, up here is the uh, Nebraska Book Festival, and one of the interesting things about it, the one thing that I haven't talked about yet, is that you can view the insights. Um, because individuals have... Um, they do put in oftentimes their ages and that sort of thing. Um, you can look at the profile of the people. You can see how what percentage of the people are um, of your fans are male and female and what age groups they're in. So you're seeing who you're attracting. You don't see individuals. Um, as you can see, um, there are three people outside the U.S if that's what they claimed where they live, um, that are fans of the Nebraska Book Festival. And if they're in the network, um, like the Lincoln network, it shows that they're from Lincoln. You can see um, here what kind of interactions you've had, who's, how many wall posts you've had, how many people have said that they like a post that you've done. Um, and then you can see here the spike, the spikes and, and um, how how your page has gained popularity. In November, um, this was right before um, the book festival. The book festival was on November 14th, I think. So you can see there was this spike in November 
this huge increase. And so that's under View Insights. Um, there were two interactions this week. Let's see. Okay, let's go back to the page. Now, don't forget this is a page, not a group. And so, as you can see, when I, I'm an administrator and Mary Jo Ryan is an administrator. Let me see if that shows down here somewhere. It doesn't right now. But um, just to show you things, I hope I'm not making you dizzy. Um, when you go in and edit your settings, you can, on the left, this is what they'll see. They'll see a little intro. Down here, they'll see basic information where it's located. Here are your insights. I don't think anybody else can see those. Um, you can see who are your fans. And then you can also um, favorite other pages. So if I go to another page, um, underneath it, there's going to be uh, another link that says favorite this page. You click it, and um, then you select um, Nebraska Book Festival page to, to favorite. So um, if I went to the Holdridge Area Public Library, originally I went to their page, and it said favorite this page. I'll show you real quick. Add to my page's favorites. Um, well, the only one that's left is Honey Lou, and we're not going to have her be the, we're not going to have favorite the Holdridge Area Public Library from the Honey Lou fan page. But I already have from Nebraska Book Festival and from the Nebraska Library Commission page. Okay. Um, so at the top is the most recent status update. And then um, these go from most recent to oldest. Um, you can see who likes your status updates. And as you can see, they are posted quote unquote anonymously. They are posted, you are the administrator, and so they are posted with the icon. They don't know who posted it. It could have been me. It could have been um, Mary Jo who had done this. And so you can see that. Um, and this is the wall. Um, there's the, if people want basic information, this one doesn't have hours or anything to that effect. Um, events, I posted um, two different events. One was the book festival and another was something that happened in the evening, which was hosted readings and open mic night. And this is an already closed event, but you could continue to invite guests. Um, you can invite, let me create a group or an event. I can't remember when it is. There's one coming up in November. Let's just say November 24th. It's the annual meeting. And it's in Lincoln. I do know. And if you add the street address, then there's a link, and I think it goes to a map, um, either through Google or something, perhaps. Okay, I'll delete this in a second. But um, you can add a picture. Oh, you can also add a picture for your fan page itself. Um, you have to have a, a something that's saved to your hard drive, and then you access it. Um, you can select, this is um, the arts, and it is, okay, that didn't look very good. So, uh, meetings, there we go. Um, business meeting, because it's an annual meeting. And you can set um, different settings for that. I'm going to skip publishing this because I'm going to delete this soon enough. And you can invite your own personal friends if you want to go through there. Um, and that's the first way to do that. You can also, if you have people that you know are not on Facebook, if you want to kind of draw them to Facebook, if you have their email addresses, you can import them from Hotmail or maybe from your Outlook. I haven't done that, but I've done it from Hotmail before. Um, and that's it. So then the other uh, thing that you can do, um, you can promote your event with an ad. Um, and I'm going to cancel this event. Okay, go back to ads and pages. Everybody doing okay so far? <laughs> Let's look and see if there are any questions. Because so we have to move on to groups real quick. Nope, we're doing okay. Oh, okay, and I'm sorry, we're going to take a real quick break. Oh, no, I can keep talking. I'm good at talking. <laughs>
Well, actually, we're, we're going to take a break because we have wonderful attendance here today. And we had some people join us after we got started. Okay. This person? Got her. You guys can all take a drink, take a break, take a little mental break. Okay. I think that's all we're going to talk about with uh, fan pages for now. Um, you can post uh, photos. I did post photos. You create One nice thing about fan pages, you could create albums. You cannot do that in groups. Discussions, I tried to post some discussion questions. Uh, that didn't go over very well. People didn't really respond. Reviews. Um, somebody did do a review. I never saw that before. Interesting. And then there's this little chevron and there are notes. Um, this is where I, if you're really going to, and you can also do HTML in there, if you know HTML, so these are actually live links. Um, this is if you're, like I did a press release, this is the longer stuff. If you don't want to put all of that just in a quick status update. And then I did do, I added WorldCat um, application so that people could search for their uh, books through WorldCat. I don't remember doing that, but apparently I did. Okay, so there's kind of where HTML starts to get involved. Alrighty, let's talk about groups. Uh, one Book, One Nebraska. Uh, if you want to create a group, um, fans of, well, let's say, support <laughs> Support group for Nebraska librarians. <laughs> Don't we need support? All right. And you talk about the description, which shows up then on the page. Uh, group type. Clinging. <laughs> Is there one for clinging? <laughs> clinging to each other. Uh, common interest, maybe. And then lots and lots and lots of stuff. Books. Books. Anyone see literature? Languages. Philosophy. Uh, I don't know. Okay, but anyway, uh, recent news, where you're located, and let's create this group. Oh, uh, description and category, category, activities. Let's see if we can do this. Um, lots of different things that you can enable. Um, or disable. Um, this is where uh, the group can be open, closed, or secret. I hope I can delete this thing. I do not want to publish this. And then I can invite, oh, I know what I was going to show you back on pages. Um, okay. And then this is where you invite people. Um, and that was the last thing to do. Okay, let's go back to my groups. I hope I can delete my group. Hover? No. Oh, I'll try to figure out how to delete it later, apparently. Okay. Um, when, I have to go back because I want to show you one thing on fan pages. One way to promote fan pages, and you also want to ask your fans to do the same thing for you. Down in the lower left-hand corner, they hide it. Um, you can share. So uh, you can either send it as a message to your friends, um, or you can um, post it to your own personal profile. on the Nebraska Book Awards. And so I actually did this live, and this will have showed up, it shown up, excuse me, terrible grammar, in the um, most recent news feed. So um, this will show up on my friends' pages, and it'll show up on people who are fans of Nebraska Book Festival. Okay, back to groups. I hope I can delete that group somehow. Okay. 
Um, so this is One Book, One Nebraska group. Um, this started because there are three selections for in 2010, the Green Glass Sea, Unwind, and um, the Wright Morris book, The Home Place. So uh, as you can see, things that are posted are posted by you personally. So if you have an offensive profile picture, it will show up. Um, I've ch I change my profile picture often, so if you have some privacy issues about your personal profile and not wanting people to see your profile uh, picture, things like that, um, then I would highly recommend against you creating a group if you're going to be the one who's going to be the administrator of it. So um, you have the tabs again along the top that people can access. Here's the wall with most recent updates. Here's the information. And you go in and edit all of this. Um, you can see the category I selected was entertainment and arts, books and literature. So when you created the group, you could have done that. Discussions, I posted questions for discussion. Um, the Home Place by Wright Morris, I posted, post, posed a question which showed up in the newsfeed. Have you um, read it? What did you think? And we had three people that made comments, or two people that made three comments. Go back to the discussion board, um, the Green Glass Sea, have you read it, what did you think? And I responded to my own question to try to start something and it just kind of died. Um, even though we, ha here's the thing about pages and groups. We have 244 members. Do we have really 244 people who are truly and really interested in One Book, One Nebraska? Or is it just really easy when they're invited to join a group and they're not active? Um, or to become a fan and they're not actively following it? That is not uncommon. So then you have to work hard to do your marketing end on the other end, and we'll talk about that in a second. Photos. I had fun with photos. Um, uh, I had people submit photos of them reading the book and then had those converted to read posters. You could do the very same thing. This gets people interested at looking at your site to see what you're doing. Uh, we don't have any video at this time, and by the way, depending on your speed, videos take forever to load up to Facebook. Your better bet would be to post a, a link to YouTube, in my personal opinion. Events, um, if anybody's doing a One Book, One Nebraska discussion, I asked them to submit those to me. Um, you can use pictures. Um, there's the Wright Morse Art Exhibition, and so I did a screen capture of something from the Mona website and used that as the picture. Otherwise, as you can see, some of these aren't very discuss, uh, very um, exciting. So maybe I should have done a picture of the book cover or something to that effect. Okay, so that is the one book, and here's where you upload a logo. You, if you want to do a picture, it's really nice. Um, those, you know, do show up um, very nicely, give you kind of a branding for whatever you're doing. Okay, we're going to go back to the PowerPoint uh, for just a little bit. Let's see, from current slide. We'll be going back and forth. Um, reference, if you, now we're going to talk about some uses of Facebook. If you want to use Facebook as an opportunity for you to um, perform reference and answer reference questions. Um, one thing you can do is um, if you're friends with people from your library who are fans or a part of your group, if you're actually friends with them, um, you can chat with them live, and but you must be logged on. And this means then that though they can see your personal updates 24-7. Um, Non-friends can always send you emails. They can find your, um, if you're a fan of your own page or if you're a member of your group, which you, I think, automatically do become, you can email anyone uh, who has a profile that shows up on Facebook. And so they might send you an email um, through Facebook, not through your uh, work account or something to that effect. Another thing that you can do, which you saw um, on the fan page, was that um, I added WorldCat, and what you do is you search for WorldCat on face, through Facebook, and you look for the application, and then it shows you how to add that to your page. Um, some people do Plugu, and some people do Mebo. 
And let me show you that real quick. We're going to be going back and forth, so I might just show this page. Mission. Uh, boxes. And there's WorldCat and there's Mebo. So there is a way to go to Mebo, Mebo.com, Mebo Me, and from there they give you a way, they show you how to add that to your Facebook, um, to your Facebook tab, either in group or page. Um, discussion, we talked about discussion a little bit, more conducive using a group discussion tab. So if you're getting ready for a book club uh, event or something to that effect and you want to get some hype um, going, you might pose a few questions and see if people will talk about it a little bit. Or if you want to do it in place of a, of a uh, group discussion, if you wanted to, for example, um, pull, um, participate in the One Book, One Nebraska, um, or say something got canceled, you could do it anyway, then you could do it on Facebook. Um, another way to do it is to post um, to your page or group just an update right here, and then there's a place for people where they can comment. So I could add a comment about this press release. And so you could pose a question here, and then people could, and say, what do you think? And then down here, people could comment. They could also say they like, like, now I'm doing this personally. I'm going to say that I like the fact that Nebraskans are invited to nominate books for the 2010 Book Award. Um, so that's one other thing that you can do. Photos. Um, again, you can change it so that people cannot add photos to the wall, either in the page or the group. Um, and there is a tab at the top. Always there's a tab that says photos. You can remove it if you want to, but I, I, I guess I wouldn't. Um, there aren't very many photos here for Nebraska Library Commission. Um, again, with the page, which this is a page. Oh, yeah, fan photos. Uh, fans uploaded photos they were allowed to. Um, with the page, you can create albums. With groups, you cannot. Let me show you. You just get all of them. You cannot create albums. Events. Um, the reason I say it's more conducive using the group, um, I want to show you something. You can create an event as opposed to the page, which didn't work. Um, and I hope I can delete this. I know there's a typo, sorry. Um, create the event, add the details. Okay, um, you can invite people to come, and what's nice is, oh, you can invite the members of the host group, One Book, One Nebraska. In other words, they don't have to be your friends. Whereas in the page, you can only invite people who are your friends or send people an email. So what's really nice is that you can invite um, people that belong to your group and they don't have to be your friends and it targets just them. So that is one big pro to uh, creating a group. Um, also, another big pro, again, let me mention, is that you can send emails to members of your group. You can message guests, different things like that. And it shows up in their e message box. And I think, I'm trying to remember, here's the problem, is that um, these are personal emails, and these are can't remember if these are fan page emails or group emails. Let me see if this is a group or a fan page. But it's easy to ignore them. That's the only problem. Yep, this is a fan page. So it's easy to um, ignore fan page updates.
but group emails come directly, I think, into your inbox. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. This is a typo. The Mebo. Sorry about that. Just delete that so the future people don't have to see that. Um, and same with that. There we go. Sorry, people. I guess I didn't have my presentation all set up. Polls. Um, if you want to ask people opinions, you can set up a poll application. Ask people what they think. So, um, you can target a page or a group. You ask your question. You give your options. Um, you can say what your but. You can label your button, and then um, you can post it on your wall if you want to, and show pictures of friends who voted on the poll. So that's kind of fun. So. Um, you could do, who is your favorite character from this book? And then you could do five characters and then have people vote. So something to create some interaction, something to create some hype about a book that you are going to be discussing um, in an upcoming book club or something to that effect. Kind of fun. Or, you know, which character do you think um, most closely resembles your personality? Something fun like that. Um, let's see, let's talk about using a hook. Um, one Book, One Lincoln to me has been, um, Lincoln Libraries has a, their own page, but One Book, One Lincoln um, has done some pretty amazing things. I'm going to, um, they, their book was People of the Book, and so they did some extra things to get people um, interested in their book and the content of their book, so stolen art. Um, check out the Interpol that sends you to the Interpol's web page. Um, so extra information about something that's going on at your library. Um, and then here's one that gets them to their website. Here are some books in the Lincoln City Libraries collection related to the subject of illuminated manuscripts. So you are marketing your library through your Facebook page. Very cool. Um, I talked a little bit about FBML. Um, there is a way to, if you know how to write HTML, you can write FBML, which I haven't figured this out yet. So, um, but I just want to show you that there is a way to make um, tabs on your um, fan pages look exactly like your website. And these have hot links sometimes. This one doesn't, but I just want to show you the Columbus, Ohio Metropolitan Library. And here is the link to get um, how to get static FBML. And you can add it to your page. It's, um, I'll add it to the Nebraska Book Festival page, even though I don't know how to use it. And then when you go to Nebraska Book Festival page, I'm sure you're all going to remember all of this. Edit your page. Down here is this thing called FBML. And follow the links, dig around, edit application settings, or remove application. Let me see if it shows up on the tabs right now. I haven't created one yet. But then eventually there will be a tab that says, whatever you name it, similar to the Columbus, Ohio Public Libraries. Very, very cool. Um, drum up some business. So advertise on your website. Say, we are on Facebook. Um, email your patrons. Um, create a display at your library. That Basically, you could do something like that guy did, which would be hilarious. Where is that? You could do this. You could do a display that does all of these things that Facebook does and then say, we are actually on Facebook. So something fun, some kind of hook. Um, make flyers, posters, send out reminders or reminder postcards. 
and even, you know what, send a press release to your local newspaper and say, um, we're trying something new, um, we're getting into the digital age, we're embracing Facebook, and here's uh, how, what the experience has been. Give them some personal experiences. Have them um, interview some people who participate in your Facebook group or are in your Facebook fan page. Something like that. Um, just drum up your business. And what do I have this link for? We will find out. Oh, yes. Um, there, out of Lincoln, there's this thing called the Nonprofit Marketing Network, and it talks about um, how to market your Facebook presence. So suggest to friends, cross-promote using a shortened URL, uh, run a contest, run an ad, expensive, probably. Probably won't come out, of, probably won't get that approved in your budget, but you never know. Um, and then one way to link from your website, you um, promote with what's called a Facebook badge, and it's on the edit page, lower right-hand column. Let me show you that. Edit page, lower right-hand column. Not promote with a fan box. Let me double check. Yeah, promote with a fan box. Um, it's a widget. Other. Here is your code. It is a JavaScript, and you just need to make sure you have space on your website for the width of it and the length of it. And this is what it will look like um, on your on your website. Um, I'll show you a couple of examples. Holdridge Library. Theirs wasn't showing up for a while and it was not their fault. We looked at the code and we looked at the code and it was a Facebook issue. So here it is, Holdridge Area Public Library on Facebook and shows some of their fans. Very cool. Talks about how many fans they have. And it shows that I am a fan. So it recognizes who I am, which is so weird. Um, but it's a link then to their web page on Facebook. Very cool. Um, Nebraska Book Festival. Now this is a different widget that they don't create anymore. So if you like what, how this looks, we can try to create this for you. I can try to help you with the code. Down here on the right, um, it shows your picture of uh, your brand, um, the name of it, and then the most recent update, which is kind of cool, and then it talks about the number of fans. So I haven't been able to find this for a while. You know, Facebook does change. They grow. They evolve. And so um, this is, I, I haven't been able to find the code searching back on in the world of Facebook recently. What's next? Okay, let's look at a couple. We looked at um, Nebraska Book Festival. Uh, one Book, One Lincoln is another fan page. If you want to just try to model off of some of these. The selection committee has made it first cut. The choices have been narrowed down to 80 books. Stay tuned. View all four comments. I can't wait to hear what they are. Quite a narrowing of titles. I can hardly wait to hear. Um, they posted for us, which was very, very nice of them. I asked them to um, promote the One Book, One Nebraska group, the Facebook group. I emailed people personally and asked them to do that, and they did. Thank you very much, One Book, One Lincoln. Groups. I have a feeling this is One Book, One Nebraska. See now, they went with a fan page, I went with a group. Just, it's six of one, half dozen of the other. Yep, this is a group. It's got the little group icon next to it. And one more group. 
So if you have a writer's group through your library, you can do that. If you have a teen writer's group, you could do something like that. Oh, this is um, Perkins Library out of Hastings College. Susan Franklin, she really keeps up with this um, and posts often. Monday, March 5th, February 25th. I posted this because for some reason she tried to post it and it wouldn't go. Somebody read Unwind. They thought it was awesome. So lots of photos, which is great because then kids flock. You know, as soon as you post photos, kids love to see themselves in photos. Adults will, maybe not so much, probably. But kids just love to see themselves online. And so um, one way to get people to come to your Facebook fan page or your group is to post photos. If you do this, when you're taking photos or somehow, even on your Facebook page, you need to have probably a disclaimer of some sort. Um, I might be able to help you find some wording for it, but especially if you're taking pictures of minors and you're posting them to Facebook or even your website, there's got to be a place where you have done probably a disclaimer saying that by participating in this, if pictures are taken from this, I, I, have, I am giving express permission um, that my child's photo likeness might be used on the website. So you might want to be a bit um, careful about how you post your photos. Um, because if you make them public to everyone in the world, I'm sorry, but there are people out there who like to look at pictures of children for reasons that it's not just to find out who hung out at your library. Let's just put it that way. Um, so uh, if Consider carefully whether or not you would post photos, um, especially of children, to your Facebook group or your Facebook fan page. So what are the next steps? Well, there's your badge of courage. Um, if you've already created a Facebook fan page or a group, congratulations. And go ahead and keep forging ahead. Um, if you haven't yet and you still need a um, little bit of help or have some more questions, feel free to ask me. Um, be happy to help you out with that. What happened to our questions tab? Did I get rid of it? Please show how a group page does not show up in my personal profile and vice versa. Um, I'm sorry. I don't quite understand the question. Please show how a group page does not show up in my personal profile and vice versa. Do you understand, Emily? I guess I'm not quite understanding about... If you write something on the wall for a group page, it won't show up on your personal page? I don't, I'm not sure either. Because if we go to my personal profile, view my profile. Other people will see that I have posted to the I posted because I'm an administrator I posted to the fan page. So Hella if you wanted to clarify your question um, okay go ahead and do that and then fan page versus group. Um, the library has a group and just started a fan page but still shows up on your own personal page. Um, it always will because you are the administrator. Um, you have to have a personal you have to have a personal profile to be able to admit be an administrator of either a group or um, a page. Somebody has to run it and it has to come from a personal account to start. So that's why you have to create a personal account first. And maybe that answers your other question. Um, let's see, five minutes left. Oh, here we go. Okay, what happens if you leave a library and you are the administrator of the fan page? Do you have to completely start over with the page? No. Um, if you have another person who is a fan of your page, let's go. Um, whoever started it first um, has eminent domain. 
I guess you would say, they have the most rights to the page. And um, so, and you can search um, on help. Over here is help. Um, account help center. Um, you can ask, there is some very good discussion on how to do this. But um, down here, do, 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 do. I have to look at my list of fans, and you have to find them. Um, whoever's next in line, it's it's by um, major. What's the word when you have people ranked above each other? So I'm seniority? ranked seniority. Thanks. Who's been the admin the longest? So say. I'm, I was first, then Mary Jo, and then there was somebody underneath there. Mary Jo can delete somebody below her, but somebody below her who joined, who became an admin after she did, cannot remove her. Um, and if so, if you search the help, um, so if you search the help, then um, that will... Um, Okay, I have too many internet things open. There we go. Okay, next question. Good questions. My messages on my group show up on my personal profile. That's because when you post to a group, um, it is going to show up on your news feed. Um, let me show you once again. So newsfeed, um, so many minutes ago, 27 minutes ago, I posted to the fan page. Other people are going to see that too. Um, I think there's a way that you can do it so it doesn't um, publish to your personal profile. You can go into uh, your edit my page and look, look that up, I think. Are your instructions and slideshow available? Um, this is the next question. Yes, these will be posted. Um, afterward, the slideshow itself will be posted, and then, of course, this live presentation will be posted so that you can follow all these links. I know I've provided a lot of information today. Um, I used a different email address when creating my fan page and then made myself administrator. Oh, so that's a way to keep it separate from your personal... Did you... Did um, the person who mentioned this, did you create a separate personal account to do this, um, which if you wanted to, I suppose you could do that. You could create two different accounts and have your quote unquote professional presence on Facebook. Um, Laura mentioned this. I hope it's okay I'm talking about you, Laura. Um, if you want to clarify that. Um, this other one says, should we keep both fan and group pages? Um, I would look to see how many members of your group you have and how many members are uh, fans on your fan page. If you're just wanting to continue just with one or the other, look to see which one is more, more popular. Um, but also weigh the pros and cons again of which one um, is working out better for you. Otherwise, you're going to be trying to keep up with two different entities on Facebook and depending on how often you post, that can be somewhat time consuming. Next question. So when you change the admin, the page is associated with the personal page of the new admin. Um, well, you have more than one, you can have more than one administrator. But um, the admins, see I can't tell. Let's look, I'm a fan of Mountain Dew. Whoops, Mountain Dew. Let's see if the admins show up on here. Well, this is a brand, so it might not. I'll check the Mesco Library Association, see if I show up as an admin. Okay. Here's Nebraska Library Association. I'm a fan. It doesn't show who the admins are. I think it does for groups, but I don't think it does for pages. Okay. 
Okay, so um, so the question is, so when you change the admin, the page is associated with the personal page of the new admin, not if it's a page, not if it's a page, because when you post to a page, uh, you post as the page making the post, not as the person making the post, which is for groups. I hope I'm answering questions correctly. Which is better, a page or a group? Um, talk with me personally. Let's see what your goals are, um, and we'll try to figure that out, okay? Because you're still, if you're still on the fence, talk to me personally, and we'll see what your goals are, and then maybe I can help you make a decision. And Laura, thank you for posting. She does have a personal account, which she uses to hang out with her friends and then that sort of thing. And then she did create another account, one for the library, using her... Um, using her uh, work email, and that might be the way to go. Um, Laura, if you wanted to discuss a little bit more about the benefits of that or um, with anybody, if anybody has some questions, they can um, talk with Laura Hess about that. Great questions, everybody. I think I might have seen a hand raised over there. Okay. Somebody, I want to use the microphone to ask a question if you want sure. to click on hands raised up there. Okay, somebody has their hand raised. Excellent, excellent. I love questions. Maybe. Maybe they don't anymore. Maybe they typed it in. But oh, oh, there we go. Kathy, took Kathy her. Tooker has a question. Did you want to unmute her microphone? Looking back. Oh, oh. this yeah. thing? Yes, next to Kathy. Okay, Kathy, name. go ahead no, and ask your... It switched to Amy, my thing. Oh. Scroll down to Kathy. She's still here? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Kathy, go ahead and ask your question. Oh, you her again. How do I... Okay, let it, wait, it takes a while. Okay, there, there we go. go. Kathy, go ahead and ask your question. Do we have to turn off on mute or anything? Mm -mm, should be fine. No question from Kathy? Go ahead and type it in the in the questions if you have a question then. I'm gonna unmute you. Or I'm gonna mute you. Okay, another question. Can you have two personal pages, one for you and one for the admin of the library? Yes, that's what Laura did. She created her own personal account where she uses her Yahoo or her Hotmail or whatever address she had. And then she created a separate um, existence on Facebook. Um, so you go and you create a new, you create a new, um, let me log out. Yep. So then I would have done this one, Catherine. Brock Meyer, which I'm not going to do this, but here's my, I have a different, I have a Hotmail account for my personal, personal, personal profile, and then this one would be my personal professional <laughs> profile, I guess, that's what you would call it, Nebraska.gov, and then I'd create a password, and then, then maybe I'd ask people to make me the admin of those pages and get rid of myself as a personal one, and then I'd have a more professional looking photo, um, rather than a picture of me with my kid or a picture of me with my dog that would show up when I post groups. <laughs> Something to that effect. Yeah, that might be the way to go. Great questions, everybody. Excellent, excellent. Gotta love it. Okay, okay, I wasn't quite done with my presentation. Hold on, I, got, I have a couple more things I want to mention to you. <laughs> um, you can do see credit for this. Um, I think you automatically get CE credit. You, is that Jeanette? Yeah. Takes care of that. And then um, as an evaluator, I love to hear back from you guys. So um, when, when this gets archived, there's going to be a link, and I'll also send this to you. And please, please let me know what you thought. This is a, a Word document. It's a forum. It'll take you three seconds, I promise. Um, just asking, um, just getting some feedback with you uh, about um, Encompass Live in general, about this uh, presentation specifically, and you send it back to me. And if you add your name to it, then if you have any specific questions, I can get back to you personally, which I would love to do. Um, another related topic was putting 
from about a year ago was putting Facebook to work for your library. It just talks about social networking in general and the concept of Facebook. Didn't go as in great detail, but if you want to talk about the philosophy of Facebook, um, Susan Franklin from um, Hastings College did that one. And I do want to plug the upcoming Encompass Live sessions. Are you game? Game night at Perkins Library, again with Susan Franklin, a uh, very involved person. Um, and then with she helps out at the commission quite often. She um, has done uh, sessions for us. And then um, introduction to WorldCat is April 7th. So I did want to uh, plug the upcoming sessions. And one more time, I'm going to check to see if there are any questions. Okay, I think we I think we got them. Um, uh, thank you so much for your time. I hope that you found this beneficial. You guys have all hung in there. It's we're about five minutes over the normal hour slot, and so it's been a great hour. I hope I didn't talk too quickly. <laughs> I hope you're all able to keep up. And if there was something that you missed, and the the um, the presentation will be added to SlideShare and you'll be able to access the PowerPoint presentation so you can check all the links, you can look at the pros and cons, you can take this to your board, perhaps your board needs to approve this, um, you can take this to them and sh show them what other libraries are doing, that sort of thing. Anything I can help you um, with to advocate for Facebook presence. Um, I know it's difficult with school libraries, they have probably banned Facebook, they probably, the word isn't banned blocked. Oh, they children. probably filtered it, um, but if you want to keep up with your parents or the kids can access it from home, uh, if you want to do homework help for them, that's one way to get around it. Um, um, or to talk with parents so that they know what's going on with your media center, that sort of thing. Um, there are ways to still reach out to your students. And so uh, again, if you have any questions, give me a holler. Uh, talk with Laura Hess. She seems to have um, had some good luck with it, or Susan Franklin, I'm sure she wouldn't mind that I dropped her name, but um, if you have questions on how to do that, especially with college students, uh, Susan Franklin's your person to go to, and um, if anybody else here uh, would like to share their experiences, um, send them to me and I'll pass them on to the members of the group. Thank you so much for your time. Have a great day. Emily? And yes, thank you, Bill Psycho. Thank you for joining us, and I hope you come back again for another Encompass Live.